summer is fast approaching and I've got a few jobs I need to do to the H2 before we're allowed to ride again at the end of the month and go out and meet people and all that great stuff. So first of all, the bike needs an MOT. Before I get it MOT'd, I want to do a full oil change on the bike. I also want to fit some new brake pads because I'm not happy with the brake performance on this. It's a bit flat, it's got no, it hasn't got much initial bite. So I'm trying some SBS pads in this machine to try and improve the braking. Also, the clutch isn't great. On the clutch lever, when I let the clutch out, the actual bite is right at the end of the lever. So when you're pulling out junctions and stuff, it makes it really slow as you let the clutch out before it bites. So I'm gonna take off the casing. I've got some uprated clutch springs from Brock's Performance. So we're gonna check the clutch plate to make sure it's not worn. And if it's not, just install the new clutch springs. And if we get time, after all that, I'm also gonna fit a Turbo Smart blow off valve. Basically what that is, rather than, because this bike is supercharged, rather than having that charge fed round back into the air box when you close the throttle, it goes at fence out to atmosphere and you get a psh and I'm also here. noise. Yes, Mavis, how could I forget about you? Also, Mavis is back. So a few jobs to do. If you're interested in that, stick around and we'll get cracking. Chopsy, roll the intro. Welcome back guys. Well don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the Supermoto. It hasn't been abandoned. <laughs> I know there's been no update on it. I was waiting for the wheels. The good news is the wheels are now here. Can you see? Now I'm just waiting for tyres. So while we're waiting, I thought we'd do these jobs on the H2. Um, as I say, summer is fast approaching and I've got stuff I need to do. So first of all, I want to do an oil change on this bike. So I'm going to warm it up and then soak the oil out of it. Soak it I'm going to drain it out. These bikes take 4.4 litres, I believe, from empty, including a new filter. Obviously, I'm changing the filter. It was actually serviced middle of last year by wheels, but I just want to get a fresh oil in for the start of the season. And I also want to make sure I've got really decent oil in there. And my lovely friends at Silkaline have come to the rescue. Those lovely people at Silkaline have provided me some oil to do this. So they've given me their Pro 4 10W40, which is their top of the range, fully synthetic, you know, the the top of the line oil. So I want, that's why I want to change this bike, because I don't know what it was put in it as part of the service. I know you can put semi-synthetic in the H2. I don't want none of that. I want fully synthetic and we're going for the Silkaline. There we go, the oil is warm. What I tend to do is just warm the bike till it feels hot to the touch, the oil. That feels nicely warm. You don't want to get it too hot because it obviously could burn yourself, but just hot enough to warm the oil, loosen it down and make it loosen up a little bit, uh, get a bit thinner. And uh, I think now let's get the drain plug off and uh, bang that oil out. That is the drain plug right there. Try and do it without touching the exhaust and burning my fingers. There it is. I've got my little uh, capture tank. This is like a proper oil drain tank. So it's got a little hole in it. And then of course you've got a thing to remove this side. If you haven't got one of these, you can just do this, cut up an old oil, bot, oil container, cut a hole in it, use that to drain into, and then you can pour it out into something. That's quite a good way of doing stuff, but I do have the proper thing. So I'm gonna use that. Got all the tools here, you know, got all the tools. All the gear and no idea. I know what you're all saying. You're all saying it, aren't you? Look at them headers. Absolutely lovely. And you're absolutely right, they are. Van Demon exhausts. Beautiful. So this is a bit annoying, because on the Abba stand, <laughs> I've got to sort of balance it a bit here. Once that gets some oil in it, it's obviously gonna stay in place a bit better. Ooh, yeah. 
because we've heated that oil, you know, that's why I haven't gone too hot with Lower it. Lower the bike down, it will make it's it not easier. not gonna scold me. Ah! Look how runny that is. Nice and runny. That is uh, nicely warmed. It's still got a green tinge to it. Yeah, I maybe didn't need to change this at all yet. Now, as it takes over four litres, I'm hoping it's all gonna fit in here. I think this is a five litre container. Oh, go on, in you go, in you go. God, that came out, didn't it? What do you think, Mavis? I think your hands are now dirtier than Mrs. Chops. You think it needed changing? Can't hurt. I really should have rubbered up before I started. Put my gloves on. Always rubber up, guys, before going in. Always rubber up, Mavis, eh? If you're referring to carnal pleasures, I wouldn't know. I really don't know when it was last flushed. This is the oil filter here. Got myself a, an oil filter removal tool. Slip him over. Tighten him up. This is new, this. Not actually used this before. I think it's going to be rather good. The thing that's great about working on the H2 is, of course, there's no, even though it's a sports bike, there's no belly pan fairing. So you're just straight in. Straight at where you where you need to be. Oh, there it goes. It is a messy old job. I was watching a song on YouTube the other day. Kalimoto, I think it's called. He's got an RS660 Aprilia, and he was doing an oil change, and he said, "Don't warm the bike." do the oil change without starting it because his, his rationale was once you start it all the oil is going to be flowing around the engine you know it's going to be in the top of the engine you're not going to get it all out because it's going to be sitting in the head i sort of see his logic but it's how much more runny that oil is because it's warm you drain much more out by warming the bike it even says to do that in the uh, service manual as well so i think it's definitely the way to go mavis i'm blaming you here are you squirting again? All right, before I call it a night, I have just put on the new filter, just hand tightened it. I tend to only hand tighten them really anyway. I've got hands like shovels, and you only want to tighten it up to about 17 newton meters, so I can do that by hand, so I'm not bothering. But one thing to do when I change the oil is if you rock the bike now, you can make sure you get every last bit of the old oil out. I'm not too worried on this because this oil looks really quite new. But if you're doing an oil change on a bike, you know, just have the oil in longer. As it's, on, as it's on the stand, I'd normally take it off, tip the bike left and right, you know, and get the oil to rock every little bit out. So I'm going to leave that draining overnight now. It's getting on a bit now this evening. So I'm going to pack it in for the evening, have my bath, have my tea, and come back tomorrow and all that oil will be drained out. Well, it's drained out now anyway. But why not leave it overnight as I'm finishing this tomorrow? See you in the morning. Jeans, how old are you? What time do you call this? Yes, yes, maybe so I was having a lie in. Morning. So the bike is now nicely drained. I think we've got every last bit of oil out of this machine now. <laughs> now I want to check the clutch. I want to try and improve that clutch fill. As I say, it was right at the end of the lever. It annoys me. I think when it was dynoed, because it's 240 horsepower this now, I think on the dyno it may have given the clutch quite a hard time. Um, and I've heard that when these are tuned, you know, it can, the clutches can be the weak point and the uprated clutch springs will sort it if I've got enough wear left on my clutch plates. So I'm going to remove this clutch casing, drop that off, pull a couple of clutch plates out, have a look, measure them. I need to get the specs of what the standard... Uh, clutch you know the the standard thickness needs to be of the plates but we'll do that when we get to that bit but for now let's just get the cover off and have a look inside lovely titanium bolts gorgeous race fasteners lift away so we've got the timing chain here to run the cams here we've got the supercharger gears that's the feed off to power the supercharger at the top there. There's a wheel in here with another chain and that goes up round 
the supercharger and drives the supercharger. And when people talk about changing the gears on their supercharger, they basically change this, this size of these little sprockets here to make the supercharger spin faster. Mine's standard, I, I don't want to take any more power out of this bike. It does not need any more power for what I use it for. It's got more than enough power <laughs> than what I use it for. But if you did want them, the next stage, if you like, on this bike to get more power is to do the supercharger gears and make the supercharger spin faster, hence more boost. But I'm not going there. Now, I'm not going to take the whole clutch stack out. I don't want to mess with that. I just want to check a couple of the plates. Plate off. And these are the standard orange springs. The main cover should come off. It's not black, they're not scored. Even the, the, you know, the, the metals are not scored or black or tarnished. So the manual says uh, friction plate thickness between 2.92 and 3.08 millimeters. My clutch plate. Sitting nicely, about three. So about three mil. Looks like they're fine. I'm gonna put them back together. So I think I'm gonna leave the clutch alone. Doesn't seem to be much wrong with the clutch. Put almost like hardly anywhere on the clutch plates. It all looks good. Quite pleased about that. So now let's just fit the uprated uh, clutch springs. It's a standard clutch spring. Uprated clutch spring. You can see it's considerably bigger. Considerably bigger, isn't it? And that will basically hold the clutch all together more, put more pressure on the clutch, pushing it, the pushing the clutch all together. So less likely to slip. Bang them in. Brock's performance there from. <laughs> Mavis, what's the torque settings for the clutch springs? Kawasaki H2 clutch springs are 11 newton meters. Thank you. Hit. Boom. I recently purchased this, which is a little torque wrench that fits into your standard socket so if you haven't got a dedicated torque wrench I thought this was rather brilliant can you see that that basically plugs in line with your your wrench your socket and uh, beeps digital when you're at the right torque setting pounds foot pounds newton meters how many newton meters may this you did tell me 11 newton meters so really not very many About there we go, 11 newton meters. So it reckons. So that's the clutch back together. The next irritating job is it's left a bit of the old gasket behind, like around here. You know, I, I need to clean up the surfaces here. So we don't get any leaks. Here's the cover, the same story, just clean some of this old gasket off before putting it back on again. Next job! What I'm going to use to do that is these plastic gasket scrapers so I don't damage any of the actual metal. Just be a little bit careful around these bits at the top, obviously don't want any of that material going into the engine. Thing to notice, notice these sound deadening pieces on the inside of the casing to keep the sound down. Mechanical whirrings. That'll do, pig. Or oh, Mavis. I have read the service manual. I have a new gasket. What you've got to do with this, you've got to apply a bit of uh, like sealant on one area of that outer clutch where I said where you've got the crank position sensor coming through. Bit of sealant there. Um, I've got some special uh, gasket sealant for the bought for the Ducati. We will finish it one day. So we use that you and then you've got to actually tighten again. all those. It's a specific sequence to tighten all the bolts down, which we need to follow. So look at that in a minute. That's my Ducati three bond liquid gasket. Ducati mode, Ducati gasket sealant in a Kawasaki. A little smear of that across that surface there. The new gasket. Uh, there. What is really difficult with this is there's no dowels or anything to. Really difficult. Mavis, what's the torque settings for these 
Clutch cover bolts. Clutch cover bolts at 12 newton meters. So it wasn't crisscross all of them, it was just crisscross for the first two and then all the way around. Interesting. So that's the casing all back on, all torqued up. Panel back on the bike as well. I've torqued up the sump bolts and now I'm going to put the oil in it. So as I say, we've got the Fuchs Silkaline to go in this bike. It takes a regular 10W40, but it takes 4.4 litres with, uh, with the filter when it's completely empty. So I think basically, Let's put some oil back in it. Look at the standard oil filler on the H2. Little anodized oil cap. <laughs> Absolute quality standard parts on this machine. Ooh. Thanks, folks. Did Silkaline. So that's the four liters in, and you can see we're now registering sort of halfway up on the sight glass. But of course, the oil filter's empty you've got to put some of that oil around the engine. So I think I'm going to put in another 100 mil or so and then start it up and see where we sit with the oil level. Okay, so it's on the upper mark on the sight glass now. So I'm going to start it, let that oil run through the engine, fill the filter up and then see where we are. Here goes nothing. <laughs> disappeared from the sight glass. I've dropped the bike down to ground level just to get the front and back obviously sitting level. Let's remove the fillet and just top her up. There we go, we're just about creeping up to the middle of the sight glass. I don't want to overfill it, that seems to have taken more than 4.4 litres. Seems to have gone about four and a half just over. So I don't want to go too mad. Let's start it up again, let it warm through fully and see where we are. So that's the oil all done, lovely, fresh oil in there. Can't beat that feeling. Now I want to look at the brake pads. As I mentioned, the braking on this bike, it's fine, it's got M50 calipers, you know, it's got a Brembo Master Cylinder, but they just don't bite very hard. The initial pull is sort of a bit lacking. They work when you fully pull them, but I want a bit more with less lever pressure. So I contacted Daniel at DR Bikes, and he suggested trying the SPS R90 sintered pads. Uh, just give a little bit more initial grip on the disc. So I'm going to take these pads out, we're going to have a look at them. There's not much wrong with these pads, this bike's only done about 3,000 miles, so there should be plenty of life left on them, but I just want to change the compound to see if it makes much difference, gives me a bit more feeling, a bit more bite initially at the lever. Right. Rubber up. Thanks Mavis, thanks for the reminder. Let's rubber up. Pad number one. Not really a great deal along with that, is there? Pad number two, same story really. Visually, they're not glazed. There's not much wrong with that. But it's not delivering enough bites. A fair bit more material on these, which means I'm gonna have to push the, push the pistons back in a little bit. Okay, let's get a bit of brake cleaner in here. Might as well have a little clean up while we're here. Oh, silkaline brake cleaner, funny that. Pretty good. To avoid too much mess when doing this, I like to connect a little syringe. And as I push the pads in, obviously it's gonna squirt out fluid. And when, the, when you push the pads, they sort of try and push out again a little bit and that will save any, save sucking any air back into the system. And have it all go into your, in your, to your syringe. 
more or less all the way in. Knit that back up again. It's a little bit fiddly. Let's get these suckers in actually. There we are, I think we got him. Riding over to the edges. There we are. Woof! Carefully. Back on. Got plenty of fluid actually in this uh, master cylinder. So I'm just going to pump the lever now and you watch this fluid go down. Pump the brakes. There you go. See the level dropping as it's pushing those pistons back out again. And I can see their petrol piston. Yeah, that's it. And actually, because I didn't let any air back in the system, because I had the bit of tube on there, you shouldn't actually need to bleed the brakes. I will see the lever movement. It's actually very nice. Because I want these to be absolutely perfect, I'm just going to bleed these a couple of, a couple of times. So pull the lever in, pump the lever, pull the lever in. There goes the fluid, shut her off, pump it again. Loads left in the pot up there, one more time. As you can see, no air coming out through that at all. I'd say that was pretty much perfect. Now if you pull it off, if you put some pressure on the syringe as you pull off, it'll even suck all the fluid out. Job done! Rinse and repeat for the other side. We're certainly getting through the jobs today. That's the engine all done, the brake pads are dressed, the clutch sorted. Now I mentioned a blow-off valve at the start of this video. That is it basically. It's a little valve which sits on the side of the plenum and uh, that's a new gasket. As the pressure builds up, it basically just lets the pressure out to atmosphere as opposed to you know, feeding it back into the air box. So it makes a little psh noise. I think there is some benefits, you know, it releases that pressure quicker, all that business, but mainly it just makes a good noise, <laughs> which is why I'm fitting it. You don't need any more blow off sounds, you make your own noises. But unfortunately, I don't have time to fit that in this video. I'll do a separate video of fitting that blow off valve. Um, it'll be all fitted by the time we do the ride to the MOT station, so you're probably going to hear it before you see how it's fitted. But uh, that's it for now, guys. Really appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking around. I, mean, I quite enjoy working on bikes in the garage. It's brilliant. I think half the fun of having motorcycles for me is working on them, doing jobs to them. That is, well, that's at least a quarter of the fun. Three, the other three quarters is, of course, riding. But I do enjoy working on my bikes. And I hope you've enjoyed watching me tinker. So thanks for watching, as always. And I will see you on the ride to the MOT station next time. Cheers, guys.